guys, so this video will show you something really cool. As you've seen previously, you can actually work with the lighting engine to implement your own objects, for example, and your own light system, and really use Unity's power inside the 2D ecosystem. Well, in this tutorial, you're going to see that this actual power can also be scripted with some behavior. You don't need to be a master developer or whatever to actually be able to use it. And it's really cool for graphic design, and simple level design, let's say. And it also can be manipulated through code, which adds an even more depth to the system. It has basically visual scripting. So what is visual scripting? Well, right here you can see it, basically. This is a visual script. So we're just hopping into Unity. And we're going to create like a table, like a states, from state 1 to state 2. The states will each have... A sequence of well, kind of code let's say or just like a sequence of steps they will do and actions they will perform on the specific game object we specify to actually well create a specific behavior based on a lot of variables that we're gonna define eventually and when a state is done it will just trigger an event to move to a new state and cycle continues or just have diverging states depending on the results and really the system is very in-depth you could look into it it's unity's fsm or finite state machine which means that there's specific amount of states that interact with each other and every state has specific behavior and can either trigger another state or yeah if you i highly recommend just looking into it a bit more if you're really curious about it but the logic behind it is very easy and we're going to guide you through it in this video. So let's create a basic state machine. Now a behavior that we want to create inside Unity is taking this door that we have here and actually use its animator to move it, either close it or open it. How we're going to manipulate it is through this distance parameter. So when the distance, let's say, is greater than 10, we're going to close the door when the distance to the player, I mean, is greater than 10. We're going to close the door. And when the distance is lesser than 10, we're going to open it. So when the player gets close, we open the door. When he gets far, we close it. It's simple enough. And we're going to create this behavior using the file state machine of Unity or visual scripting. Now, the way to do it is simple. First, we're going to select the door object. We're going to go to Playmaker and open the Playmaker editor. Now, we're going to right click and add a state. This is our first state. Let's call it, this is the update loop, let's say. This state will be always running because technically our door does not have two states, it has one state. just has to check on every frame, let's say, whether it should be open or closed. Check the distance, then send this value back to Crawl Script 2, actually get everything up and running, and just finish up. Go on a refresh and go for the next frame to do the checks again if it has to be open or closed. So, this is how we write it as an update. Now, what we're going to need, we're going to need variables. So, the first variable we're going to need is, well, the distance. Let's call it distance, and it should be a float, and let's add it. So, we're going to go to states. Now, in the states, there's a very important button, which is the action browser. This action browser just basically lets us manipulate our game object. So when we click it, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to have to get the distance. Now, something really cool about this project is data from Grawl. So basically, this class really is an expression of data that you can get from Grawl or you can send to Grawl. So, you can get a distance from player, you can do the calculations automatically, and will tell you how far it is from this game object. You can get data from Grawl, actual data you send and interpret uh, if need be, or you can send data yourself. Now, this data that is sent specifically from get and send, I'm going to show you how to do it from the Grawl side. It's just simple, just click this and we'll get it. We're not going to use it right now, maybe a bit later. But simply put, just have an array of 10 strings at max. They're going to be global. So imagine it for any Graal developer, Graal 2D developer. It's like the ATTR array. It's just 10 elements, and they're global for every single 
position. So if I change element zero in code, it's going to be changed everywhere else. It's not just for the game object. So in our case, since we want to change the door based on the distance to the player, we're going to take distance from player. Now, what this window shows that which game object we want, so from where, maybe I said children want to get distance or whatever, and then the distance is going to go towards our distance variable or the x. So now what are we going to do with distance? What we're going to do is we're going to take the animator, then we're going to set the distance, set the dist parameter that we had, so set animator float. We're going to get the dist parameter and the value, we're going to press, we're going to use a variable and we're going to use the distance variable. So we're going to, so we're going to get a distance first, then we're going to set the animator float and basically, well, that's it. So when we finish, we're going to go with a finished event. Since it's out of position, we're going to have to drag it down. Now, for that, we're going to have to add a new state. We're going to call the state the reset state. So just to ask for a next or a next frame state, if you want. And add the event finished. Actually, let's get it from the event browser. Finished. So now we're going to add a transition finished to both our frames. So when this frame finished, and we're going to actually link them up together. So what does this mean? Now basically it means update. When update trigger a finished event, it will go to next frame. And when next frame triggers a finished event, it will go to update. So let's add this finished event to next frame because it's just our buffer frame, let's say. And now let's just update the script and upload it to Growth Script 2. So here we are in actual Growth Script 2. And now when we actually get close to the door, as you can see, it opens up. When we get far away from the door, it closes. And basically we have created an automatic behavior. Now imagine the door having an actual collider. Imagine having a different behavior to it because it's not really limited to just moving an object or working with the animator. You can actually set a property. You can really look into how a finite state machine works. Just change a specific property to an actual light source, for example. Make it flicker or make it smaller based on the player's distance. So now, how to actually use that to communicate. So, let's say in my case, I would like to send this distance variable and actually check it on the player well, every time I move, every time it's actually updated. So the way to do it is simple. First, we're going to have to go to the action browser, go to data from Graal and use this send to Graal event. We're going to set it before it finishes. And we're going to have to choose a channel and a value. For that, we're going to need a variable. So for that, we're going to choose a variable. It will have to be an int and we'll call it target channel. We're going to set it to zero because we want to have the first element or element zero, the first channel element out of the 10 from zero to nine. Now we're going to go back to state. We're going to choose the target channel. Now for the value, we actually need to send a string. So we cannot just give the distance. For that, we're going to have to create a two string. So we're going to convert a float in our case to a string. So the flow is our distance and the string variable, we're going to create a new one. Let's call it distance string and make it a string. We're going to add it. Now in our, in our states, we're going to convert before sending, we're going to convert this to string. And now basically we're converting and of course we're going to have to set the value. And we're sending to Graal this string. Now jumping inside Graal script 2, it's very, very, very simple to actually get this thing up and running. So you're going to have to have Quattro Graal use virtual scripting set to true for 
any visual script to work. So if you want something to completely ignore visual scripting, you can set it to false. But by default, on default weapons, it will always be set to true by itself. And you can actually get from visual scripting, or get this variable that we sent, using this actual line. So quattro, growl, get from visual scripting, and then set the channel number, in our case, zero. So now when I hit apply this code, and actually click, as you can see, let me just move the lighting away, I'm 17 tiles away. Now when I get closer, I'm five, so it actually has to say open. When I go farther away, I can click 41 tiles away, or 41 unity steps away, thus keeping the door closed. Now, of course, you can always use send to visual scripting, giving it the channel and whatever strings you want to give, right now it's the MO, but really you can give whatever you want to actually send the data back to the visual scripting and maybe interpret it from there. So, for example, now since it's global, it won't be recommended or something like that, but I could really manipulate the door just wherever I'm standing from Grow Script 2 and sending to the channel 0, for example, a true or false, the door should be open or closed, and then interpreting that inside Unity to be able to move the door however I want via code through channel 0. Now I have to make sure that this channel 0 will only be used for this door specifically because it can be changed through another script, which is something we do not want. But that's just technicalities. That's really the power you have from Grow Script 2 and from Unity to actually interact with the visual scripting directly. Another use to it would be also for debugging or testing. For example, let's say the distance does not work really well. You can check what the variable is actually saying by sending it right here, checking it to, through Grawl and making adjust, adjustments accordingly. Now, as far as other example, really it's not just limited to animators. You can directly set properties on specific scripts. For example, this light has a specific script that just targets the red, the color dot R, or the red hue of the actual point light color, or the lighting system, and just change it based on distance. The closer we are, the less red we have, and the farther we are, the more red we have. Now, for that, you can use float clamp, float divide, to actually create some mathematical values with the distance, to be able to generate, for example, if we're far away, we want like, the range to be shorter, or the range to be wider, Really, it's really up to your imagination and visual scripting is really easy and intuitive, basically. It's just dragging blocks together, chaining them in a way. So yes, okay, we want to get the distance. We want to like divide by a specific value to make it smaller or make it wider, or multiply by a value to give it a bigger range, and then just, well, set a specific property or change something specific and then trigger an event in this case, just a refresh event, but you can trigger more events, have a more in-depth network that will actually have multiple states that will work in tandem with each other. Now, as far as another example, I'm coming back in Grosscript 2, and I want to show you some that I believe some keen viewers may have detected. But let's say I want to get close to the door from the actual door side, not from the wall. Well, as you can see, the door just keeps opening and closing. And it's very simple. It's because in Unity right now, the door is actually just, I'm close to the door, so it has to open. But when it's open, I'm actually farther away from the door, so it has to close back. And I'm just stuck in this loop. So as a really cool thing, I would just recommend you trying to fix it. There are many ways. And of course, the obvious way is to get the range higher, for example, a range of 20. Maybe that will just fix it automatically but it would make it so as the door stays open for longer, which wouldn't be really efficient. So I would highly recommend just try out to fix it in Unity, try your own door with the system, and just get it up and running and get a real good feel for it. So yeah, guys, these are basically how visual scripting, how the basics of visual scripting works in Unity, and how it's translated to Grawl Script 2. It's very intuitive, very simple, and just dragging blocks and logic together to create a easy script that would just automatically work. It would be amazing for level editors specifically. While working on the lights, you just hop in, get some very basic visual scripting, 
and get up and running rather than have to make this door system from scratch in Graal Script 2. And yeah, I would highly recommend just looking more into visual scripting, more into the finite state machine of Unity. And if anything seems confusing or really daunting, just hop in on Discord, ask your questions, and we'll be more than happy to help you out and guide you through everything.